Welcome to our Daily Bread. Good afternoon, friends. I'm Brother Art here at the Regal Room. Glad you've taken this moment to join with me to get our daily inspiration and encouragement. That's what Regal does here every day, Monday through Friday. Our goal is to encourage and inspire you through the Word of God, through the power that is found in Scripture. Scripture is supposed to lead us each and every day. Not only to find ourselves, not only to find our way, but by opening up the Bible, we can also find God. Join me in prayer today. Father, our Lord, we thank you and we thank you and we thank you for the blessings and for the grace that have been bestowed upon us and we thank you for the leadership for allowing us to follow you. Jesus, we thank you for coming into this world and allowing us to be just a step or two behind you, knowing that wherever it is you go, you've made it safe, you've opened it up because you are the way. You are the way for us to have life. You are the means of which we are to gain our destiny. And I pray, Father, let it be my will and the will of those who are observing today. That in order to obtain our destiny. We choose you. Bless your name as we enter this talk just for a few moments. And recognize your greatness. In Jesus name we pray. Amen. We find an interesting dialogue in the 22nd chapter of Matthew that more than likely you've read, maybe once, maybe twice, who knows how many, I've read numerous times. This exchange is between the Pharisees, the teachers of the law, and the Jewish state at this time, as well as with Jesus. This dialogue is the Pharisees and Jesus and the Pharisees if you haven't caught on, they were on a mission. You see, Jesus was interrupting the many things that they were doing. Jesus was interrupting the control that they had on society, on the Jewish people. Some of it was for the Jews' well-being, but a majority of it only benefited the Pharisees. And here comes this Jesus guy with this fresh talk, with this new talk. But in all actuality, everything Jesus said was from Scripture. So we see a problem here. That maybe the Pharisees were omitting some things to share with the people. Because though it would have benefited the congregation, they preferred to benefit themselves. On a mission. Mission, get rid of Jesus. Let's propose to him a question. Let's find something that we can indict him on and get him out of here. So they say, Rabbi, teacher, should we as Jews pay the imperial tax? Should we pay the tax that goes to Rome? Should we pay the tax? That has been instituted by Caesar. Again, a trick question from the Pharisees to Jesus. Should they break the law? Let me modernize it. Should the Jewish people, by the suggestion, the scripture says the opinion of Jesus, should the people be what we would call tax evaders? 
Jesus's response is as profound as his ministry and as his identity, because Jesus says to them, give me a coin. Let me see a coin. Knowing that they were aiming to hold him in contempt, he asked for a coin and they gave him a denarius. And before answering, Jesus looked at the coin and he looked back at the Pharisees. He looked at the coin. And then he looked back at the Pharisees. And as he typically does, he answers the question first with another question. And he asked the Pharisees, whose image is this on the coin? Whose inscription is on this coin? And the Pharisees answered, Caesar. Verse 21 gives the continuation of Jesus' response, which is our daily bread. So let's take a look at what Jesus actually said and put that on the screen. He says in verse 21, so give back to Caesar what is Caesar's and to God what is God's. Looking at the coin and looking at the Pharisees, he said, give back to Caesar what is Caesar's, but give back to God what is God. And they were impressed. Not in a way where they were re or willing to side with him, but they were impressed because by giving this answer, what they assumed that he was going to side with one or side with the other. If he sided with God, he was against Caesar. If he sided with Caesar, he would be against God. But Jesus articulated an answer that they didn't expect, but it satisfied both entities. Give back to Caesar what Caesar's. Give back to God what belongs to God. An answer that, again, we've probably read numerous times, and I know I did, and it goes right over my head. Because this conversation is not about a coin, per se. It's not about money, per se. And it isn't really about the law, per se. You see, Jesus sought the coin to make a point because when he turned it over and he looked at the coin, he observed the image and the inscription on the coin. He held up the coin so that the Pharisees could see it as well so he could find them all in agreement with him. By him asking whose image is on this coin. And they all said Caesar. And by saying that, what they were signifying, what they were co-signing, was the fact that because the image on the coin was Caesar's, this would validate ownership. Because Caesar's image was on the coin, this meant that Caesar owned the coin. So first part, what Jesus was saying was, because his image is on it, he owns it. You should give back to him what belongs to him. But then there was a second part to Jesus' answer. Because he also said, we ought to give back to God what belongs to to God. And that's what many people miss. That for the moment he was viewing the coin, he also looked at the Pharisees. He viewed the coin and he viewed the Pharisees. He did this because the image that was on the coin, it reflected who its owner was. And if you remember Genesis 127, that we are made in the image of God, when he looked at the Pharisees, him being God, speaking of Jesus, what he saw was the image of himself. 
So the instruction was to give back to Caesar what belongs to Caesar, but also they needed to give back to God what belonged to God. And since their image reflected God, since God's image was upon the Pharisees, but they were so far away because of their evil content their decisive ways, their self-righteous beliefs, because of all these things as supposed representatives of the truth of God. What Jesus was instructing them to do was why you're bringing back to Caesar what belongs to him. You need to bring yourself back to your rightful owner. And that would be God. The Pharisees are not the only ones made in the image of God. Also made in the image of God is myself, and that would be also you. The question is, have you returned to God what belongs to him as well? Have you brought to God what reflects also his image? Let me be a little more clear. Have you, if you are far away, if you are in the world satisfying yourself, if you're out in the community, in the environment, being focused on money and being focused on narcotics and being focused on uh, all kind of things that can just simply be defined as sin. When are you going to return you to its rightful owner? This is our daily bread and brother art. We do this every day. Monday through Friday. And I'm leaving you with a thought today. That no matter your race, your background, your nationality, your age, no matter who you are or where you come from, friends, you are made in the image of God. God's image is upon you. But the question we close with today, if you are far off, both physically and spiritually, if your heart is in the hands of someone who is foreign from God. When are you going to put yourself back in the hands of the owner? When are you too going to return yourself to God? Share the message. Not that it's mine or not that it's me. I believe many, many people first misconstrue what Jesus is saying. And number two, they need to be returned to the owner. Let people know that they are made in God's image, but they are not of themselves because as believers in Jesus, we were bought with a very, very high price. We belong to God and it's time that we go back to where we belong. I love you guys. Have a great day. Think about what we shared today and allow it to lead you back to your owner. God bless you.